morning, everyone. Um, I think one introduction um, that the anchor ought to have given you about me is that I'm a journalist, all right, but I'm not a prostitute, and I'm not Bazaru, and I'm not news trader, and my pen is not up for grabs. Now, this clarification was necessary given the cloud of uh, doubt that exists around the integrity of my profession in this country. Now, can I just say that we, the journalists, have ourselves to blame for this complete credibility crisis in India. I've always believed that when you tend to compromise your ethics, you are exposing more and more to a lot of public scrutiny and, uh, um, uh, and indignation. And this applies to all of us in every walk of life, more so to media professionals whose job was essentially uh, to serve as a watchdog in any civilized and successful society. So coming back to the subject, which is um, Indian media, whose story are we reporting? I think having been a part of um, Indian media at fairly senior level for about 10 months, I can say with a lot of responsibility that they are not reporting your story. They are not reporting the story of a common man. They are reporting the story of the corporate houses who are sitting in the behind and pulling the strings, and we are functioning nothing more than just puppets. So there, hence the reason for the cred credibility crisis. So what is happening when we say credibility crisis? See, there were two or three uh, basic rudiments you know, um, in our profession that when we grew up and we were aiming to become journalists, we were taught that come what may, you don't compromise on, this, on, on, on these points. And one of them was fairness. The fairness has go gone out of window, and we are getting increasingly unfair in our reportage. Bias. We were supposed to be impartial. We are no longer impartial. And I'll explain why we are no longer impartial. These biases are no longer implicit, but we are very brazen about it. We are proud about it. And together, it poses a huge question mark to our integrity. Now, what is happening as a journalist, um, I'm sure you guys are not aware of it, but as a journalist in the newsroom across the world, you start your day from the morning editorial meeting. And that is a place where you get together, you go through the merit of the stories, and that helps you to decide the editorial agenda for the day. Now come to Indian newsroom, what is happening particularly to uh, the TV. The news, the conversation is not about deciding the 360 degree treatment of the story or deciding the priority of the story, but it's about, the conversation is about which politicians you are going to teach the lesson on that particular day. Now, that is not the job of the journalist. We have become hitmen. We have become mafia. Hence, the credibility crisis for us. I mean, if you remember, I'm sure you all have watched the coverage of last Lok Sabha elections and the lot of assembly elections that were held after that. Now, watching TV and the coverage of those elections, you may have got the impression, at least I did, that there was only one political party in the fray. That is not fair. The reason why went excessive, we went overboard in giving prominence to one political party because there was a corporate interest in, in, involved. So we couldn't afford to be fair. Now that wouldn't happen in the BBC where I had the privilege to spend 12 years. That's because there is a watchdog there. And if we ever falter on all these basic ethics of the journalism, they'll come down on you like a ton of bricks. And to the extent that they might even cancel your license. That is not happening here. We do have the regulatory body, but they are effect ineffective and toothless. Do you know, um, on the day the Delhi election date was announced, this is what happened. There was a gentleman called Raghav Chadda, representing Aam Admi Party, first invited in the CNN IBN uh, discussion show. Upon his arrival at the, uh, at the office, he was asked to leave. They were very brazen about it. No apology. Now, we all know, this is not secret, what Arvind Kejriwal, the leader of Aam Admi Party, thinks about the owner of CNN IBN, which is Reliance Group, owned by Mr. Mukesh Ambani. What I'm saying as a journalist, you have to detach yourself from your personal emotion, from your personal politics, and you have to treat the story with as much objectivity, as much impartiality as possible. We are not doing that. Instead of being watchdog, what we, have, what we have become, we have become partner in crime. And the reason why I'm saying we have become partner in crime, if you remember on the day of Delhi elections, on the 7th of February, this picture went viral. Do you know why? Because the election guidelines says 
that the 48 hours before the last vote has been cast, no political parties will be indulging in any form of election campaigning. Now what BJP did, and let me make it very clear, BJP, let's not single out BJP. This time BJP has deeper pocket in the past. Other political parties with more money power, they did the same. So more or less, more, um, most of mainstream parties are accused of doing this. BJP plastered full page advertisement on 12 newspapers published from Delhi, spending close to about 4 crore rupees. Now, forget the money. The fact that the BJP was flouting the rules and we media were pro providing the platform for them to flout that rules. Now, there were debates whether this was a violation of EC guidelines. I wrote a blog on my page and I said, yes, I concluded it was the vi violation of election guidelines for these reasons. Because if you read the uh, People's Representation Act, 126.1b uh, of 1951, it clearly says, warns the broadcaster to not to carry any election matter that is likely to influence your decision to vote in, a, in, in favor of one particular party. But we did that. That's what we are doing more and more. Now, before we um, uh, go that, this is the news coverage. The, all the biases and the unfairness that, that I'm talking about, that's related to day-to-day -day news coverage. Let's go to um, prime time debate. What is happening in prime time debate? Prime time debate, the purpose of which was to shape your opinion about the day's big, biggest political story or any other story. But what is happening in prime time debate is this. So this was the noise recorded not from the share market or the fish market. This is the daily happenings in the studios across newsrooms on all, pla on all channels in India. So what was meant to be the news hour has now become the noise hour. And that's the reality and we have no option. So the question is why do they do that? Do they do that because they believe in what Bible said, the money is the root of all evil? Obviously not. I think the channel owners or the corporates, they tend to take, draw more inspiration from what George Bernard Shaw said. The lack of money is the rule, uh, uh, root of all evil. So there is a greed to earn more money in the quickest possible time. I mean, the model they have, I mean, the perception that, that if they don't compromise with their ethics, they will run in losses, that's all rubbish. They'll still be profitable, but there is a greed to earn more money. Do you want to earn 400 crores in a year vis-a-vis -vis earning, let's say, 15 crore in a year? They prefer going for 400 crores at any cost, and that's the reality. Now, how are things in other uh, media in other countries? I've had the chance to observe media in many countries, uh, in UK and in my last role as the international coordinating editor for BBC Global News, where I was looking after the international uh, bureaus. Most of those bureaus were based in uh, hostile countries like Arab nations, Africa, Central Asia. This picture, very compelling, went viral. In 2013, if you remember General al-Sisi, he took over power through military coup in Egypt. And he started arresting every journalist who dared to criticize them. This included few of my, uh, my former colleagues in the BBC. They spent more than 500 days in jails. Now, they were not prepared to bend to uphold the values of journalism. The easiest option for them would have been to just agree with the government. But this, they, they dare to uphold the values of journalism, even if it meant spending um, uh, uh, 500 days in an extremely un inhuman conditions. They did that. In India too, we journalists are going to jails, but not for the journalistic reasons. For the reasons perhaps associated with sexual harassment or blackmailing politicians. That's the difference between that. You see, UK has got just two 24-7 news channels, just two. One is public funded BBC, other is Rupert Murdoch's Sky News. 
And then they have got two entertainment channels called Channel 4 and ITV. Now coming to ch Channel 4, which is essentially an entertainment channel, but it has a serious news ambition. And it fulfills the news ambition through one hour of program that is broadcast between 7 and 8. Few months ago, you remember what happened. There was a man called Sam Masroor who was allegedly an ISIS operative, social media handler based in Ma Bangalore. There was a report of him being arrested. Now who broke this story? In India we have got 800 news channels and yet it didn't even occur to me that there was a story waiting to happen in Bangalore. Channel 4, not even a news channel, has just one hour of news programming, doesn't even, ha doesn't even have a bureau in India and it dared. It had the audacity to break that story seven and a half thousand kilometers away. And when this story broke, all the Indian channels, they started responding and they had to, which is, which is, which, which is what has become the symptom, they started owning this story. And how they owned it? Like this. This channel claimed that this was the first to get hold of the pictures when Channel 4 had already obtained this picture and the report that it had broadcast included this, uh, this picture. So the two things that you often see on our channels, are the breaking news, there is never a dull moment on our news channels. News keeps on breaking, right? So you will see something, This, uh, let's say TEDx is happening today and it will be a breaking news even until tomorrow afternoon. That's the reality. Now compare that to the BBC and Sky, there the frequency with which the news breaks either once a day, once every two days or perhaps once a week. So therefore when news breaks, you sit and take notice that something really serious has happened. They are in the business of doing 24-7 news break uh, culture, so you don't take them seriously. So therefore, they don't have credibility. So what's the way out? I think that's where the whole topic comes, you know, ch challenging the full stop, trading the down on untrodden path. I mean, the easiest thing for me would have been to go back to England and live a comfortable life. You know, my children are British. I've got a house there. Didn't have to worry about the education cost. Didn't have to worry about the health care, which all of them are the best in the world. But I think if everybody runs away from the problem, then who will clean this mess? There is a mess to be cleaned here. And I owe it to you guys and to the common people. You know, because I have got a lot in my life, thankfully. God has been very kind. And I think this is time to repay that. And as somebody told me, that the only person who can create a BBC-like model in India is somebody who's already been at the helm of BBC. So therefore, the whole idea came from there. Some initiatives are already there. You got uh, News Laundry, uh, which is owned by Madhu Trayan and Abhinandan Sekri. They are doing a fantastic job in exposing the malaise in media. Uh, if you have a chance, go and log on to newslaundry.com. It's really, really good one. There is uh, scroll.com. Then there are a group of journalists who used to work with me in uh, India Today group. They have now come together to form uh, something called India Samvad in Hindi. So the efforts are going on. I think you need to create an alternative media platform which is there to counter the lies and deception uh, broadcast by the mainstream media. And my aim is to create a portal which is called Jantaka Reporter. And why Jantaka Reporter? Because right now what journalists are doing, they are representing the interest of the channels. There is no one to represent the interest of Janta. Hence Jantaka Reporter. Where my aim is to create the BBC-like work culture. For a change, there will be editorial guidelines book. So when in doubt, Reporters will be uh, able to refer to the editorial guidelines. The philosophy is simple. We will not be publishing any story for which we have to apologize. And the fairness will be absolutely central to our whatever we do. Audience trust will be very central to whatever we do. Um, I, coming about the audience trust, um, I've, in my eight months that I've been working on, I've been speaking to lots of investors. And one of the first investors who came, he said, here is the three crore rupees you need for two years sustainability, but isko girana hai, is chief minister ko girana hai yahan se. Now, that's not what, you know, sort of I'm planning to do. If I had to do that, I would have been very happy for a crore plus package, you know, and in enjoying the comfortable life. But I'm here to make a difference. And if I do more of the same that is happening, then the purpose is defeated. So the whole idea is to create a platform which will be objective. We are not here in the business of being first. Because the moment your editorial ethos is being driven by that philosophy that you want to break the story at what cost, whatever cost, first, that's where you compromise with the truth and the facts. 
So we don't want to be the first in, uh, in breaking the story. Instead, we are going to be trying to aim to be the credible first. So whenever we do that, and in long run, I'm hoping that this Jantaka reporter will become the reference point, you know, to check any facts. Like we used to do when I was growing up, there was a story, uh, and we didn't know whether it's true or false, it, it, it facts or fiction. We used to wait for BBC to broadcast it. And once the BBC broadcast it, there was absolutely no doubt in our mind about the uh, authenticity of that story. So that's what we are aiming to do. Look, I've made a baby step in that direction, but it's not one person's job. I think we have to do it together because, you know, this is, you're, you're trying to challenge the status quo. You're trying to challenge a BBC-like platform and there has to be a collective responsibility. We don't have good talents. I've been trying to interview talents for the last three months. I couldn't find a single person who can write. And that reminds me of my uh, experience uh, in India today. I met a senior journalist. A big incident had happened. And the gentleman I spoke to, I said, why have you not filed for website? This is the biggest story of the day in the parliament. And that guy with 20 years of experience, such a big brand, said, I can't write. So I spoke to the owner of the channel. I said, are you aware that your senior editor can't write? And he said, what's the big deal? There are many journalists who can't write. That's not the reason why we have hired him. He has not been hired based on, based on his journalistic ability. He has been hired based on his ability to contribute to the channel's financial successes. Because this guy has got good contacts. He knows the corporate, corporate, corporate house as well. So when we organize the event, he is the guy who is going to get me those guests, based on which I will go and uh, get money from, uh, for, uh, from the sponsors. We are not going to uh, do any of those. In fact, what we are going to do, we are going to do everything opposite to what is already happening. And if you ever see me breaking the promises that I'm making here, please come and tell me, because the Janta is going to decide the editorial agenda. Janta will, for the first time, will have the control over you know, what story should be up and what should not be. And if you see that I've ever broken the promise, trust me, I will not have the comfort of telling you that that was just a jumla. Thank you very much.